what's going on everybody go ahead and hit the like button it's free family it's free that's all i need okay hit the like button hit the like button what's up with everybody how's everybody doing welcome 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 um let me see let me say hi to everybody um yes yeah, support the channel let me do this <laughs> yeah there we go um yeah okay so let me see i see tavon is here tavon is letting me know he here what's up tavon um i see jason i see lanaya what's up boo um seeing some people some regular people enrique pamela fun with car saying samantha's uh fun with cars the same way let me see what's that oh sam's club i like it well i don't know if i like that one um travis russian saying what's up um i'm seeing a lot of benji daryl thank you <laughs> that's so sweet ah i love it i love it i love it world peace is i absolutely love this woman i love you too um i see michael i see i work there there's a no-go um antoine what's up antoine love you i'm um, in a hillary i'm seeing a lot of good people that i i, I you know oracle king What's up, y'all? I'm actually going to do, I'm going to say some things on my, um, Birthday goodness, um, on my live to make sure people come over here and let them know it, it's, it's go time, baby. It's go time. So, um, let me say that, um, you know, it's go time. So guys, welcome, 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 welcome. Everybody that's in my um, Instagram chat, go ahead and come on over to the YouTube, the U of Tube. Your girl is live right now. So go ahead and go live. Head on over to U of Tube. Head on over to U of Tube. Head on over to U of Tube. Head on over. <laughs> Y'all head over to YouTube. I'm live right now. Okay. I'm not going to be on here long. I'm not going to be on here long. So anyway, guys. Welcome YouTube, welcome Facebook, welcome everybody to uh, this t particular show. Now, y'all, I'm just going to chill. Like, I'm going to kick it. I'm going to chill tonight. I have a, a, a list of things I want to discuss, but I'm not going to, uh, I, I'm going to kick it. I'm going to kick it with y'all tonight, okay? I got, I got time. I got energy. I want to kick it with you guys. So come on over, y'all. Come on over to YouTube, okay? Everybody that's on here, go on to YouTube. I am dropping off. Hit the link in my story, and I will see you guys there, okay? Love y'all. Yeah, y'all. So anyway, guys, um, you like the, you like the, come on over. You like that GCN dance? Well, guys, tonight, like I said, I'm, I'm, we gonna kick it, okay? We are going to kick it. We're gonna have a good time. I'm not gonna lie, you guys, um, you know, the, or, I, I've been struggling today because y'all, I've been, I've been hungry. I've been wanting to eat. I, I just been in, I just, I don't know what's going on with me, y'all. Well, I do know what's going on with me. I'm a woman. <laughs> I'm a woman. That's the problem. I'm a woman. Okay. And that's, that's where I'm at. I just want a snack on. I want ice cream. I want cupcakes. I want all of that. That's what I want. If we're being honest, that's what's happening. Okay. So you guys, welcome to tonight's show. Um, I I love it. I see somebody in the chat that says, Blue Crossroads has been a while, but really enjoyed your shorts on us Sigmas. It was spot on. Thanks for that. Of course, of course. Day is done. Let's kick it. Let's kick it. So tonight, you guys, I want you guys to ask me questions, okay? I'm going to be answering questions from the chat. Um, I had somebody that wrote something in the comments and that's what I'm answering tonight is what they answered in the comments. I'm also going to touch on some things that we talked about earlier because I want to put it on the, the, the YouTube space as well. Yes, Michael, I'm glad you came on over. Okay. People be all the time. Like does Sam really look like this in person? Yes. Sam looked like Sam. Okay. I don't, I purposefully y'all just so y'all know when I, when I have done things in the past, like when you see me on YouTube, when you see me on Instagram, I purposefully choose filters that look like me. And there's a reason for that. There was a person that I knew that was a friend of mine who told me that it was distracting how different, how different 
I looked on the filters. Like they didn't like the filters. It looked obviously fake. And so they were like, if you could find, if you could either go with no filter or a filter that looks like you, that'd be better. So I was like, no, like, you know, I, I'm going to do, I'm going to, I, I I mean, I, I don't know. I'm going to do, I'm going to do what I got to do. So I decided to stop, you know, using those things and start looking like me. And, you know, that's what it was. Um, and so people will say things like, oh, it's a, no, no, no. I, on purpose, I purposely have chosen certain things because I don't want it to be so distracting. Like it, it's easy in the Instagram space to look different, right? You look complete, you can look completely different. There's filters that completely change your face. I didn't want that because I, I don't desire to be unrelatable, right? I don't want to be unrelatable. That's my whole point. I, I want that when you see me in person, you know exactly who I am. There's no question of who I am. And so that's why I've done it. And so I, I, and I recommend other people. I recommend other people that are in this internet space, that they're on social media, look like you. If you don't choose a filter, look like you. Because I think that we try so hard to look like ourselves. And, and how is that going to work when somebody sees you in person? Like the, the goal is to be able to transfer and, you know, go to outside platforms and you're going to walk into the show and they're going to be like, I don't know who this is. Like, is that Sam? Wow. Cause I've seen y'all, I y'all listen, I have been around people that don't look none like themselves on the internet. Like they look completely different. And that was just a fear of mine that I, like, I never wanted to be that different. Never. All right. So anyway, it's besides the point. Um, but thank you, Pam, Pam. Thank you, ma'am. Pam has actually seen me. Pam is part of Power Up. And um, Pam is has seen me in person. Pam has actually known me since I was in high school. So uh, fun, fun fact, fun fact. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan started off the giving early. He thanked me. For a photo filter, he said, photo filters are adding to the meta crisis. <laughs> thank, thank you, Ryan. I <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you. Um, but yes, no, they look like two different, completely different people. Um, so again, you guys, um, what's up, Lyrica? What's up, girl? I just, I've always wanted to kind of stay true to who I am. Okay, so that's just what that is. Um I appreciate you guys for the starting the giving early. Y'all know that I've been demonetized on this YouTube space. So any support is appreciated. I really do um, appreciate you guys being able to sew into me prayerfully by the end of this month. I'm going to be able to reapply for monetization on YouTube and get back started on this platform the way I was. Um, so we're praying for that. I'm going to continue to pray for that. I'll probably start fasting around that time as well. Um, just because I want to see God to do do remarkable things with our platform, we've grown despite the fact that we've been in demonetization. Um, you know, people usually your platforms are hidden and it's harder to find. And we've grown. Um, we've grown since I was demonetized. Demonetized at three hundred and forty six thousand. I think I'm at three hundred and sixty thousand. And so um, I still have grown more than most channels, even though I'm demonetized and have been a little bit shadow banned. <laughs> and so um, I really do appreciate you guys sewing into me and I thank you for hitting the cash app. So, uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's what that means. A blue cross row says demonetize. Oh, that means you're telling the truth. Uh, no, nah, I made a mistake. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I made a mistake. I just didn't know I was making a mistake. OK, I have been making that same mistake for a year and I thought it was it was something else. But let me y'all. Since we kicking it tonight, let, let me be real. Let me keep it real with you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. Look, they're, they're starting to give in early tonight, y'all. We got Shark Boy. He, he sent some money in. Eric Lloyd hit the cash app. Thank you guys so much. Again, thank y'all for every everything y'all do. So, yes. Um, they can't stop the growth, though, Lyrica. But here's the thing, Lyrica, that I want to tell you guys. Here's the, here's the God in it. Because when it happened, I was asking God for a break. I was asking God, should I take a break? And I was afraid of taking a break because of the growth, right? 
And so that week, when I was demonetized, I, like the day before I got the email, it's almost like God's foreshadowed. I already knew it was like I already I just watched a video about four other major content creators that were demonetized. OK, so they were like, listen, demonetization can happen to anybody. It can happen to us. You know, blah, 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 blah. They don't agree with something on your channel. They don't like what you're posting. It can happen. Like, wow. Didn't know that. Next morning, right? After I ask God to take a break, I get demonetized. I get the email on the way to a training that I got demonetized. I was like, wow, 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 wow. So with that being said, I'm literally, literally that Sunday night, I wrote on my board. I should have taken a picture of it. God, should I take a break? Next morning, wake up, go to work. Here, what hits the email? The email says, um, sorry, y'all, my, <laughs> my breasts <are> just itched. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, anyway, Lord, I guess yeah, I saw you, Benji. It says, it says shark, but I was like, I, I, it said Benji on it too. So I, I recognize it was you. Um, so anyway, y'all, I went, I went into the, you know, whatever to the YouTube, um, I was like, okay, well, now I got to figure it out. And y'all, let me tell y'all a secret, secret insecurity. Okay, so I was posting content. This is not allowed where you're just watching, you're facially reacting, re facially reacting to the content, right? And so I was facially reacting to the content, but I was not significantly, significantly changing the content enough. So because I was just facially watching it and I wasn't changing the content, that was against YouTube rules. I didn't know that. I haven't been doing that since the very beginning, right? So I get the email. Me and Pam do some work. Pam is researching like Pam is going ham, okay? She is literally looking it up. I'm not able to do it on that particular day. We find out that that, that probably was the issue. And so we erase all content that was just me facially reacting, reacting to the content without significantly changing it, okay? And so what was interesting about this, and y'all, this is the God in it. I was actually a little insecure because some of my biggest content, oh, look at my nails. So pretty. Yeah. Um, some of my biggest content was content that I was um, facially reacting to and not changing, right? And so I felt like I needed that in order for me to get the numbers I was getting. And, and God kept dealing with me because he was like, Sam, Michael, you know me? Okay. Um, sorry, somebody said you looking the same as I remember. How do I know you? But anyway, besides point, besides point. So that was a secret insecurity for me. So what happened was I go and I see that like this is all, all the content I can make now is all original content. All original content. And it was playing into my insecurity. Y'all, let me tell you something. I started creating original content. I have not gone viral more often on, well, really on the Instagram space. YouTube space has been challenging because you already know my situation. But with the other platforms, I've gone viral multiple times, especially Instagram. I've never gone viral that frequently on any other, on, on Instagram ever. My first month of me doing that on Instagram, y'all, I grew like six. 78,000 in a month. So it was like God was showing me your, your insecurity. I can use that. And y'all, it's been a beautiful experience because it's, it's, he's empowering me in all the areas that I'm, I'm weak in. Okay. So it's been, it's been a God thing. That's my whole point. It was a God thing. What's up, Joshua? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I appreciate you. Welcome to the show. Michael says, ha ha, doesn't answer how I know him, but that's fine. Um, but anyway, long story short, 
Um, it's just one of those things. It's just one of those things. So I'm, I'm honestly grateful to God for the experience. I'm grateful to God that I was able to kind of have to go through that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm grateful because now it gave me more confidence in my voice. And even though it was taking away an income, right? An actual income, a significant one. And I'm, I'm a, I'm a mommy, you know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, trying to make it. And so I'm saying to myself, like, you know, I'm going to keep rocking and rolling and, and figuring this thing out. And I thank God for it. I really do. I thank God for this, the giving me confidence in my voice and, and make, and forcing me to grow. He always pushes me in the deep end. I always say that God pushes me in the deep end and he makes me have to confront things that I need that, that I need to overcome. And so I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for the entire thing, even though it was, it was a little abrupt, but it was okay. Thank you, Shark Boy. Benji, Benji. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, so, guys, we are going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and um, go into uh, the actual situation. So, um, what we're going to do tonight or what we're going to do today is talk about a situation that was, ri that was written to me. So there was a, a written situation where somebody commented and said that they found their girlfriend in the car with their ex. This was the actual question. I'm going to find it. You should do topic. A gentleman caught his girlfriend in the car with her ex-boyfriend. And how do I look in a relationship? That's what it says. So the question is, a gentleman caught his girlfriend in the car with her ex-boyfriend. How do I look in a relationship? And so uh, I asked them to email me. I needed more information. I didn't get more information. But I'm going to give you guys a couple of scenarios just in case you're watching. And you didn't want to tell me every little thing. So I'm going to break down what you saw and how you should respond, all right? Y'all ready? Okay, case number one. You find your girl in the car with her ex-boyfriend. Whose car is it? Whose car is it? Is it her car? Does she go pick him up? Is she in his car? Let's just assume she's in his car and you caught them at the grocery store. Or at the, um, at, 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 let's say, whatever. You caught them in the car. What are they doing in the car? Because there's a couple questions that need to be answered. Whose car is it? Where did you find them? What were they doing when they were in the car? Now, most people would say, Sam, is it a no-go if a woman's caught with her ex? Not necessarily. Okay, if you're if you caught the person in the car, yes, she's wrong for sitting in the car with her ex, right? But we don't really know why. So to me, it's like what you know, we don't know. We don't have a lot of the information that we need. Now, if we put Sam in a situation and Sam sees her man in the car with his ex. What is Sam going to do? First of all, I'm going to ask some questions. I'm not going to confront right away. Yo, I don't know what's going on. Why this is itchy. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm first, why you, Hillary brought it up. Why you, somebody said, <laughs> Amen. I don't know who the limb entertainment is, but they cracking me up. <laughs> I probably would fight. No, that's probably true. That's probably true. I probably put some hands on some people. Now, here's the thing. I'm redeemed. I don't fight anymore. That's the part that y'all don't know. I am redeemed. I have not fought in a long time. I it's been it's been at least. Hold on, I'm doing math in my head, y'all, without calculator. 
It's been 13 years. <laughs> 13 years. 13 years since I fought. No, I didn't fight yesterday. I don't fight anymore. I really don't fight anymore. Okay, I don't. <laughs> I can, though. I can. Listen, here's the, here's the thing. Like, no, you don't. Like, y'all stop. Y'all, y'all throwing me off. <laughs> I said, I said, I'm going to lay some hands. <laughs> no, for some healing. Depends on who the man is. Here's the thing, y'all. If it's my man, I'm classy now. Exactly a limb. I like a limb. I don't know who a limb is, but I like him. <laughs> I like a limb. What? Wait, hold up. I'm still in the Midwest. I can't stay long. I'm about to go to work. I used to chase you home back in a day. You chase me home? This is weird. <laughs> Did we go to school together? You from Georgia? You chased me home how? Y'all know I was a tomboy back in the day. So that the chasing home part is whom I don't know what that means. Um in the Midwest, would that make you Chicago? I know, I mean I have family in Chicago. Hold on. It sound it sounds a little weird. It sounds a little weird. Um, but anyway, besides the point, that's besides the point. Hold the point is is this. My whole thing is this, y'all. If I was, if I was somebody, you know, if it was my man, depending on who the man is at this point in my life, I'm not fighting over no man. That's just not going to happen. I'm not going to fight over, I'm not going to fight over no man. Okay. Now, if he's like, it, I'm just saying, that's just how I feel. I'm not fighting over no man. I'm not. So to me. The way I see it is, if I see my man in the car with his ex, first thing I'ma do is I'ma I I have to go home. I gotta go home. I gotta go to a park. I'm not gonna respond in the moment. I'm not. Okay. I'ma act. What I'm gonna do though is I'm a, I'm gonna take a picture. I'm a, I'm gonna take a picture. Of the situation. That's what I'm going to do first. I got to have evidence. Your girl, What your girl going to do is get evidence. So the first thing I'm going to do is. Click, click. Evidence taken. Numero uno. Got to get evidence. Because guess what? Guess what? Most people. What do they do when they're caught? Deny, deny, deny. Oh, your girl going to get evidence. So I'm going to take pictures. Click, 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 click. And then I'm going to go away. I'm going to walk away. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to walk away. And so what will happen at that point is at some point, I'm going to call him. FaceTime, see what he does. If he doesn't respond, whatever. What's going to happen is I'm going to send those pictures to him. And then I'm going to blow up his phone. That's what I'm going to do next. And then I'm going to say, no one's slapping me a limb. That's one, that's one thing you must know. No one gets slapped. I listen, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. But what I will tell you is this. You're not slapping me without getting slapped back. That's one thing you must know. That's not, that's one thing you must know. You, you can play with your toys, but you can't play with Sam. And that's on period, point blank. <laughs> you can play with your toys, but you can't play with Sam. <laughs> Come on, child. <laughs> Y'all, I used to box. I used to fight, like, box, because my mama used to box, right? And so we... It, it, Here's the thing, <laughs> you and MJHSTYL said, my girl loves, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. 
But your girl, play with toys, but you're not playing with Sam. That's what I got to say. And for my man, girl, I wish you would. Now you using a car with my man, now you can put your hands on me? Oh, we fighting, fighting, depending on how deep it is with that man. The Jack jump out the box. What is it? What's that? What's this? <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Jack in the box. I forgot the, the nurse around. Anyway, besides the point, y'all. My, this, besides the point. I, I Where I'm at today in my life, I, I, I don't believe I'll find no man. But I'm going to send, I'm going to send the evidence. I'm going to send the evidence. I'm going to send the evidence to the man. That's what I'm going to do. And and I'm going to see how he responds. Now, the, y'all, when I have caught somebody cheating, okay, what, what happened was their phone called me. Last time I caught somebody cheating, their phone called me. And I heard them talking about cheating on me. Right? Cheating on me. And they didn't know their phone called me. They were telling a homeboy how they cheated on me. And they didn't know that I was listening. That's the Lord. That's the Lord. So exactly, Donald, it was in their bag, actually. It wasn't even a, a booty dial. It was a it was not a booty dial. It was it was in their bag. They didn't know that they called me. And I found out that they cheated on me. So yeah. And in that situation, you guys, that was God. God showed me. God revealed it. God revealed it. And can you imagine, like, why would your phone randomly call me when you're telling somebody else why you would why you were cheating? So, of course, y'all, I left. <laughs> I left the situation. We had to end it, baby. Gotta go. Gotta go. You can play with toys, but you're not playing with Sam. Not me. My whole point is this, family. This is what I'm saying. I think as a um, as a person, for me, I think it's very important to understand context, right? And understand what context certain things are in. Now, that phone call, I knew that that had, when they were talking, they mentioned they were, you know, I knew they were cheating on me, right? When you don't have understanding, I think that there's a lot of things. I think you could. Her meeting up with her ex. To me. If it was me, you caught your girl cheating on not, well, not cheating, but to me, that's still cheating that you would meet that your girl would meet up with her ex without you knowing. And they sit in a car together. That to me is an actionable, actionable enough offense to leave the relationship. Now, if you choose to stay, because it says, how do I look being in a relationship? I would say to you, you look stupid. You look dumb. You don't call somebody in the car with their ex. I don't know what else you need. Because to me, I, even if they weren't doing anything, even if they weren't doing anything, which is what I was trying to say. Like they could be sitting in a car. They could be in her car, his car, that car. They could be in the park. They could be in a grocery store. Doesn't matter. Whole point is, is deception. It's deception. It's deception all the way around. So in my opinion, it's like, Why would somebody that like get back with someone when you already have shown me that you're able to lie? You've already shown me that you're a liar. You already shown me that you you're talking to your ex, right? You talking to your ex. You lied to me about where you were. Clearly, I didn't know that she was with talking to your ex. You're communicating with them enough to, to now schedule a meet and greet. And now I see you in a car with them. It's too much. 
If it's me at this point in my life, it's a no. It's a no for me, dog. It's a no. It's a no for me, dog. It's a no. Um, because why am I talking to my ex? Unless you know, Pam brought up if we have kids. Even if we have kids, right, or a child, whatever that may be, let a, what, let somebody know. Let somebody know. Like, hey, I got to meet up with my ex. That doesn't mean you meet up in each other's car. What you got to meet up in the car for? That's intimate. Unless we, we cool like that, but... Why are you secretly meeting up with your ex? Even if you have children with them, what's the point of that? That's my whole point. I'm I'm not one like you know in my early 20s. Yeah, okay. I I say with someone that had cheated on me a lot. And that was my first love. After that, it's a no. It's a no. I, like, here's the thing. I understand mistakes. Now, a mistake is one thing. A mistake is like, oops, you know, but a pattern of behavior, nah, can't do it. A mistake, I can forgive. A pattern of behavior, I can't overlook. If you keep cheating on me, you stay cheating on me. No. Exit stage left. Now I can, like I said, I can forgive a mistake, but I can't forgive a pattern. I can't forgive a pattern. I can't, I can't keep continuing a pattern. So for me, I, that's how I look at it, family. Now in this situation, this is not a mistake. This is not a oopsie daisies. This is, I met, I created a plan to meet up with my ex and now we're sitting in a car. That's like premeditated. I created a plan that had me go out and now you see me in the car. We don't even know if this is the first time. That you met up with your girl, that your girlfriend met, met up with her, her ex. We don't even know. This is the first time you've caught her in the car with her ex. But this may not be the first time that you that she's met up with her ex. We don't know. So in my opinion, even if she told you this is the only time, do you believe her? She done lied to you before. So now I believe you. It's a lot, y'all. And, and so for me, there's a lot of, here's the thing, y'all. There's a lot of single women out here. A lot of single women. Why would I decide, if I'm talking to my brother, my brother's telling me this, and he tells me he caught his girl in the car with her ex-boyfriend. I'm telling my brother, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You need to get up out of there. That's what I'm telling my brother. There's too many women out here. There's too many, there's too many fish in the ocean for you to be caught up on somebody that you know is lying to you. Too many. And he, oh, I love them. I love them. I love them. Listen, y'all, sometimes you got to make executive decisions in life. Sometimes you have to leave somebody while you love them. I've been there. I've done that. But it's basically saying, listen, I have a certain thing that I'm not going to allow in my life. And if you're not willing to adjust, I'm out of here. I'm not, I'm not going to stay. And people can say whatever they want. They can do whatever they want. I, you call me. What is, what is Clara, uh, what is her name? Um, gosh. Chrisette Michelle say, she says, uh, blame it on me. Say it's my fault. Say I, say I left you outside in the car with a broken heart. I really don't know. I really don't have a clue. You know, she, she's basically saying, yeah, blame it on me. Say it's my fault. 
Say I left you. I saw I was in the car in the cold with a broken heart. I really don't know. I really don't have a clue. Yeah, no, I'm out of here. You could you could say whatever you want about me. What I will not deal with, and y'all will if anybody that knows me, y'all know me consistently. Y'all been rocking with me every week for the last year of my life. You know me pretty well. I marry my word. That's what you'll know. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. If I say that I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. My commitment has to be to me. When you, when you decide that you're going to choose you and what you desire over what you know hurts me, I have to choose me. I got to choose me. And at the end of the day, in this situation, your girlfriend said, bump how you feel about it. Bump, if you ever found out what this would do to you, I'm going to do what I want to do. So now you have to choose you because she's chosen her. And you staying with her is you choosing her over choosing you. And what I'm here to do as Samantha Lee is say, choose you, boo. Choose you. Choose you. If you say, you know what, if you do this one more time, I'm out, marry your word. I'm tired of people threatening that they're going to leave a relationship and they never leave. Oh, if you do this one more time, I'm out. If you do this one more time, I'm out. If you're not out, stop threatening. Period. Stop threatening. Stop the empty threats. It makes people think that they can get over on you. And at the end of the day, I don't know you, sir, at all. But there's so many women out here that are looking for a good dude. And you holding your breath. You holding your breath. Staying with someone that have already shown themselves to be deceitful. Deceitful to the, de to the, to the degree that they meeting up with a ex behind your back. And you happen. Think about that. You happen to find them in the car with their ex. What are the chances of that? What are the chances of that? Unless you were following her. That's a whole different. That means you had some question. If you were following her and found her in the car, that's not quite. That means you, you, you must have felt that she was doing something. So it's probably not the first time she's been around her ex if your gut already, already had you following her right? So you already knew something was up if you were following her and you found her. But if you just happen to find her, well, that's like, what are the chances of that? You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's one of the chances of that. That's like a God thing. That's like God throwing you a bone and, and you saying, well, I see, I see the bone, but I'm, I'm going to decide to stay with it anyway. Well, when you decide to stay with it anyway, you have made a decision, right? Don't be mad at God if it happens again. You know, you went through this all knowing what this person is up to and what they're capable of, period. And you decided knowing that information, I'm going to choose this anyway. And with that being said, you cannot be mad about whatever comes with that choice because you decided that. It's a risk you have decided to take. And that doesn't mean like, here's the thing, you guys, I say this all the time to a lot of different people. If you decide to stay with somebody, this is to anybody, male or female. If you decide to stay with somebody that you know has cheated on you or has done things disrespectful towards you, and you decide to stay, 
you do not get the right to beat them over the head about what they did. You don't have the right to continue to beat them over the head with what they did in the past and make them live every single day in shame. And every time an argument comes up, you bring it up what they did. You don't get the right to do that. You're wrong. You decided to stay in that relationship. You have to now make the commitment to get over that. You holding it over their head so that every time something happens, every time something happens in that relationship, you bring it up what they did. You bring up what they did. You bring up what they did. What kind of relationship is that? No. You decided to stay. And if you decided to stay, you suck it up, buttercup, and you make that thing work. Of course it hurts. Of course it's hard to forgive sometimes, but you don't get the right to beat somebody over the head about their past. If they're making a concerted effort to move on, you also have to make a concerted effort to move on. I don't like that. I see that a lot with women. Decide to stay with a man, you know he done cheated on you. And you decide, well, I'm a rock, I'm gonna I'm a keep staying with my man. And a lot of times y'all, let me take a sip of water because I'm going to go there, y'all. I'm about to buckle my seatbelt. Hold on. Click, click. Y'all saw me do that? Click, click. That's me buckling my seatbelt. <clears throat> a lot of women and men decide to stay with people not because they actually want that person but because they don't want anyone else to have that person. So there's a lot of people that will say, you know what? I don't like what they did. I'm mad at it. I can't get over it, but I don't want them with anyone else. That is bumping selfish. That is selfish. Let that man or let that woman move the heck on into a relationship with someone that's going to give their all. That someone is going to give them the chance and the opportunity and the freedom to be who they are and not have this little, their mistakes just hovering over their head, just like a, like a, like a, I don't know. <laughs> I try to think of what an alien, like a spaceship, just hovering like a helicopter, just, woo, woo, woo. and you can't, they cannot get, they're like, Dang, like that happened five years ago. You still bringing up what I did five years ago? You still bringing up what I did two years ago? No. You decided to stay. And if you decided to stay, you absolutely, you absolutely have to make the same commitment for them to teach you or show you that they're capable of doing better, you have the you have the responsibility of giving them the space to do better. You have to give them the space to do better. And that's not with, oh, I'm still here. That's with, I don't hold over your head your past mistakes. And that's what a lot of people, I mean, even, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all, let's, let's be real. A lot of men are like that and a lot of women, but I know a lot of men, especially if a man stays after cheating, you can't, it's like, you can't ever live that down because a man, I feel like our society has normalized men cheating and when women do it is a stigma attached to it, right? So when a man decides to stay with a woman after she's cheated, it's like she lives with that that over. I mean, he gonna bring that up all the time because there's a parts of his ego he had to overcome to stay because men don't typically stay. But if you decide to stay with her and you already done seen everything you saw that you wrote me about, that's on you, boo. That's not for you to hold over her head. If you can't get over what they've done, then let them go. If you are unable to forgive them for their past and truly give them the opportunity to make it right, let them go. 
Let them be loved by someone who is going to give them the full opportunity. Without shame. Without guilt. Without it being thrown up in their face. Give them a clean slate. To be the man or the woman they want to become now. And not be constantly reminded of the man they once were. Or the woman they once were. And I know that's a lot asking people to not be selfish. Because we're inherently selfish. We're ego driven. But in, in this instance, if you are in a relationship and you are the one who's holding over someone's head, their past mistakes, and you bring it up every time things hit the fan, let that person go. You obviously cannot move on from it. And unless you make a cons- a, a real effort tonight as we're on here to say, hey, listen, I'm going to stop doing that because I would hate. And I know I go, I'm going to go spiritual because I have to. I would hate for God to throw up in my face every single thing I've done because I've done a lot of things. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. I would hate for God to say, girl, you done did this again. You know, last time you did this, this, and this, and this, and you did this, this, and this, and this, and you just can't ever get it right. And you always, I can only imagine if God did me like that, I can only imagine what my esteem would be like, what my self-respect would be like, what my my self-worth would be like. I'd be feeling pretty low about myself. I thank God that we don't serve a God that holds over our head the mistakes that we've made. And what he calls us to do is to love people and forgive people in that same vein. And if you're unable to give them the full opportunity without shaming them, without guilting them, without making them feel terrible about the things that they've done in their past, then let them go. If you're not willing to let them go, get over it. Get over it. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. I had to go like that because it's a it's a passion thing for me, y'all. I, I'm I think that I have seen relationships be redeemed after cheating. I don't think cheating is one of those things that you have to leave somebody on. I really don't. I've seen relationships rebound and get redeemed and are amazing after the fact. I really do. I really have, I mean. But it's two people. One that's agreeing to, is is agreeing to the process to be forgiven. And the other person that is working on forgiving. So it's like a two-way street and we only think about the one-way street. We only think about the one like, oh, I'm forgiving and I'm open to receiving you again. Okay, cool. But it also takes another person to forgive, to, 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 to actually work on forgiving. Forgiving isn't easy. Especially for me, it's not. But a God, I remember there was a time in my life, y'all, where I was really struggling with forgiving someone. And God confronted me and was like, no, uh-uh, you got to forgive. And sometimes you have to forgive and love somebody from the balcony. So I forgive you and I'm cool with you, but I have to love you from a distance because you're not healthy. You're not healthy for me. You're not healthy for my life. Like I can't. I can forgive you, but I also have to walk in wisdom about how I move with you. And the way you move and I move, we can't move together. So I, it's not that I don't want you to eat. You just can't eat at my table. I Listen, I, I want the best for you. 
but you gonna have to be over there because I can't I can't have that type of energy. I can't have that type of that somebody that moves in that lane and in that vein. I can't. I, we can't. We I can forgive you, but I we can't rock together like we used to. And people think that just forgiving means give me another chance and having the same access. And my perspective is absolutely not. Once you show me that you are no longer, you are not responsible with the access you've been given, your access will be denied. And you can be mad about it. You could cry about it. You could do whatever you want about it. But the reality of, it, of the situation is I, am, I have to be a good steward. I have to protect my heart. It says guard your heart because above all things for out of it flows the rivers of life. <clears throat> somebody says it's hard to fix a relationship that has been violated but possible just have to recognize when it's not healthy and choose help thank you dr good vibes it's true it's true it's true it's true somebody said i don't give forgiving energy I am, I am very forgiving. <clears throat> I'm very forgiving. <laughs> but there's a caveat to that. I try to see the best in people. Anybody that knows me, I try to see the best in people, right? And I'm forgiving and everything like that. But um, I'm also discerning of the energy I keep around me. And so I have a low tolerance for BS. I just do. And I, I have been, you know, guilty in my life of keeping people in my life beyond their expiration date. I've been guilty of being very hard on myself about like, oh, should you, should you, you know, I've said before I'm indecisive. So I am one that's like, did I make the right decision? Am I sure? Blah, blah, blah. I question myself. But now, you know, I think really, if I'm being honest, in these last couple of months, I've really gotten to a place for myself that's very much like I trust my decision making. I know I've made the right decisions. And I know that I should have trust in my gut on a lot of things that I, I I I question myself over. Like it took me a long time to really trust my instincts. Like maybe I'm being too sensitive. Maybe I'm being too emotional. But now I've like learned like I trust my gut. Like my gut ain't hasn't lied to me. My gut has been right. And so now like I don't I have to discern where it's coming from. Like Obviously, if it's coming from an anxious place or whether it's coming from a gut place, like like right here, I have to determine which one is what. And I've had to learn what that is. But when my gut kicks in, nah, I, I'm listening to my gut. I'm trusting my gut. My gut has never lied to me. And as I've gotten closer in my relationship with God, my gut is very, very, it's clear. Y'all, when you start healing and get on your healing journey, your gut will be like, you ain't even got to see somebody in person. You could see them over the phone or you could hear them on, you could hear their voice and you could be like, ooh, nope, <laughs> nope. They could be a great person, amazing person, but once you hear their voice, the inflections, the vibratos, whatever they may be, as soon as I hear it, I'm like, okay, I know it, I, that I gotta trust my gut. And y'all, my gut, I'm telling y'all, and I, I'm saying to everybody on here, trust your gut. Trust your gut. Trust it. You are not on here by accident. Some of y'all may be questioning your gut. Maybe questioning your decision making, maybe questioning the things and the choices that you made. I want you to trust your gut. You're not wrong. Trust your gut. 
Don't allow your mind to talk you out of what your gut is saying. A lot of us allow our heart and our mind to talk us out of what we know to be true. In our gut, in our core, we know what it is. Trust your gut. Trust it. I've learned, I've learned that. I've learned that like, you know, that little feeling, that little uncomfortable feeling when you talk to somebody and you feel like their spirit ain't right or their energy ain't right, or you feel like uncomfortable speaking, like you don't feel like there's a, a natural flow and vibe, trust that. That's your spirit telling you what it is. I've learned that. I'm I'm learning that and I've learned that. Someone wrote, Sam, you sound like you've been hurt. Yeah, I've been hurt. We all been hurt. But the only, only thing that we can do is, is heal, grow, become better. And how do you heal? How do you get better? And a lot of that is really for me is Jesus and therapy. And men, I know there's a lot of men on here. There's no shame in going to a therapist. Please, if you are dealing with something and you're struggling with it, go to a therapist. There is nothing wrong with it. You can privately go to a therapist now and talk to them on your on your device. Just like how you're watching me, you can go and speak to a therapist for an hour. And literally, this person is legally bound to keeping your information. Talk to a therapist. Too many men are losing their livelihoods. Too many men are losing their minds. Too many men are trying to find other scapegoats to escape what they're actually dealing with. Go to a therapist. Go. There's no shame in it. Y'all, I mean, let's, let's be real. I'm a therapist. And y'all been watching me. Now I don't do one-on-ones anymore. It would have to be for like a very, very good reason why I would get back into the therapy game. But go to therapy. Sam, why? Because at the end of the day, when trauma happens, and y'all trauma is, for example, Man catches girlfriend in the car with X. Guess what that is? That's trauma. That is trauma. It's traumatic to find your girl in the car with her ex. And it affects your brain in a certain way. And a lot of men say, I'm going to suck it up. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm going to suppress it. I'm not going to express it. I'm going to just talk to God about it. I'm going to talk to my mama about it or my daddy about it. Or I'm just going to distract myself with work. Distract myself with women. Distract myself with outside activities. That doesn't work. There's no shortcuts to healing. Y'all, you can go to you can go to betterhelp.com. You can go to psychologytoday.com. Psychology Today literally has the picture of the therapist and the type of insurance you have. You can pick somebody, you can choose somebody virtually. Bada bing, bada boom is not how it used to be. Heal. And there's not a lot of men that are healing like they need it. Women be going in front of therapists all the time. We be sitting in front of a therapist and we don't even listen to them. When men go to the therapist, listen, I've, I've, I've sat down with so many men that have gone to a therapist and man, they change. Their mindsets change. They're clear. They're emotionally intelligent. They're able to tell me this and that and this. And I'm like, wow, you've seen the therapist. You're speaking therapist language. Y'all, if we look at the numbers, middle-aged men have the highest rates of unaliving themselves. 
middle-aged men. We've seen men with all the money in the world, with all the access in the world, unalive themselves, have whole families at home, unalive themselves. Get to a therapist. You, your life is worth it. You are worth it. And the stress and the pressure of this world can take you on a, on a whole roller coaster ride. But when you do not confront what you're actually dealing with, you do not conquer. You can only co conquer what you confront. You cannot heal what you do not reveal. And when you go to a therapist, like, oh, well, we just talking. We just, we just, we, I mean, what is that going to do? That's not going to solve my problem. I'm going to solve my problem after my therapist. No, what happens is what affects your brain, when trauma affects you, your brain in a certain way, when you talk to a therapist, it helps to, your brain to process it and compartmentalize it in a way that you're able to function optimally. Does that make sense? So when trauma hits your brain, right? It, it does this, boop, hits it real quick, right? Let's say that's your brain and there's a little dent in it. When you talk to a therapist, it starts to lessen out like that, lessen out like that. And now I can function more optimally. So you'll find, you'll find that a lot of people, when they deal with trauma, they no longer, like they can't focus in their job. They can't focus on, they can't perform like they used to. Yes. Because now your the, the trauma that's impacted your brain is now impeding your ability to actually do how things the way you used to do it. And Lyrica said this, y'all, and this is real, man. This is real. <clears throat> Men, we need you all. So speak to someone you trust. Come on, Lyrica. Alex, traumas happen. We're never going to get our old self back. Your goal is not to get your old self back. Your goal is to get the best version of you. And that included trauma. I'll say this today, you guys, and this is my, this is my thought. I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for the traumas I've experienced. And there was a time in my life where I wished and prayed those things away. I wished I wasn't sexually assaulted. I wish I didn't get diagnosed with lupus. I wish that I didn't have a major divorce to play out in front of the world. I wish that. I wish that I wasn't homeless. I wish that I didn't get student loans from my uh, my job, my 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 well, excuse me, my job, my education. I wish I wasn't rejected. And bullied when I was in high school. I wish those things didn't happen. I wished I didn't join a cult when I was in my young, early 20s. So desperate to find Jesus and found out the hard way that I can't trust people for God. I have to trust God for God. I wish those things didn't happen to me. but they did and I'm better because of it. So I don't want my old self back. I don't want the version of me that didn't experience life and death situations. I don't want that. Who I am today is who I've fallen in love with. 
the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. So your goal should not be to get to who you were. Because whatever has happened has happened for you to become the best version of you. The version of you that God created for purpose. Because the reality is the only reason why I have a platform, the only reason why I can speak to the things that I speak to is because of what has happened. Because of those things, I have the voice that I have. Because of those things, I've become unapologetic about it. Because of those things, I've been able to handle what people say or don't say, what they believe and don't believe. They, those Because of those things. And y'all, y'all, somebody on here saying, oh, well, I talk to God. Sometimes talking to God, God gives us people. God gives, gives us counselor. Why is he called the wonderful counselor? Because he already acknowledged that we would need a counselor. So stop running away from being able to talk to someone that doesn't make you less than, that doesn't make you weak, that makes you, that makes you wise. In the Bible, all these men had counselors. They were kings who had counselors, people that they would talk things through to, people that they would have a group of people that they would talk to and they would decide on making different regulations and what they would do. Even Pharaoh in Egypt would bring together counselors and people were trying to stop him from oppressing the Israelite people and setting them free. And he was like, no, nah, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. We've had counselors from the very beginning of time, the most powerful men in the Bible. We, it is, <clears throat> it is not weak to have somebody that you can talk to, that you can trust, that is legally obligated to keep your secrets. Unless they harm, unless that those secrets include you harming yourself or you harming others. Otherwise than that. They keep your secrets. They're legally bound. You guys deserve to heal. Yes, HIPAA. Jason said HIPAA. You guys deserve to heal. And there's a there's a better version of you you haven't met yet. And it's on the other side of you healing. And so, y'all, I've made... Uh, I made a big point about this and I didn't really intend to, but here we are. I can tell a lot of men haven't healed. And they haven't healed from childhood, haven't healed from things that happened in middle school, high school, college, after college, from their parents. Somebody on here said they were bullied neglected. Men, I have a platform and a lot of men are following it and I, I appreciate it. But I want you guys to reach purpose. And sometimes when you don't take the time to heal, you don't know which version of you is speaking the broken one or the healed one or the healing one, right? And a lot of times it gets harder to hear purpose when you're nursing a wound, when you're, back, when you're dealing with compartmentalizing trauma. I want you guys to all reach purpose and I don't want you to be confused by the voices. And that requires you to heal. So please, <clears throat> go to therapy. Ain't nothing wrong with therapy. Ain't nothing wrong with it.
Known, unknown, I'm INTJ personality type as well. And I need a therapist. <laughs> I need a therapist. Who do I talk to? Jesus is my therapist. I'm just saying, y'all, I've said this to my own brothers I've, and my brothers have been in therapy. Like, I just believe in therapy. I do. I believe in that for, I, I truly believe in that for men because, y'all, I've seen men conquer the world <laughs> with a therapist. I've seen men broken down by divorce and, and get through it with a therapist. But if you've never been through what you're going through, how do you naturally know how to get through it? You don't. And to expect yourself to go through something you've never been through and have all the wisdom and the knowledge to get through it, it's just not, it's not real. It's not true. So I just wanted to say that, you guys. I wanted to tell you guys that. I don't want to harbor um, harbor that and keep keep going. I, I just felt that today in my spirit. I see a lot of I see a lot of men. I, and it, it breaks my heart because I see a lot of men that are struggling. And they, I I could probably bet they don't got a therapist. And that that hurts me, you know. I can't I can't save the world, but. And really, I really wanted to say that on all my platforms. I said it earlier on Instagram as well. Um, everything in life has its requirements. Mental health issues, said a lot, Queen. There's no shame in asking for help. Absolutely. Um, this helps in the gym. Absolutely. Therapy, Jesus, and the gym. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, I mean, that's the reality. You just always, you 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 have to be able to process things. And sometimes it, it's harder than others, right? So that's that. All right, you guys. I, I'm reading some of the comments. Now get days, guys. Um, I would, would be ending the live right about here, but I have time today. And so I'm going to talk a little bit more about something that I was talking about on my live. This is really, yeah, no, Lyrica. Exactly. I love that. She said, um, I applaud Charlemagne, the guy for saying he took off after seeing a the therapist, his marriage and whole life got better props to him. Yes. He saw a guy named Jay Barnett who also saw Taraji P Henson and Jay Barnett is gone, you know, worldwide. He was an NFL player that struggled with mental health issues got into therapy and became a therapist. And now he's a world renowned therapist, goes on shows, very successful in his line of work. Um, and is a big proponent for men getting, getting the mental health treatment that they need and men going to therapy. He, he, he really, he really is. And I thought that, uh, you know, when Charlemagne came out with, came out and talked about that, I thought that was amazing because it just shows like we, men need to heal just like women need to heal. You know, we all need to heal. We're all going through things and growing through things. And a lot of us are defaulting upon our own wisdom to do that. And we've never been through these things before. <clears throat> are there any downsides to meeting a therapist? I don't think so. I mean, I've had a, I've had a therapist for years, you know, I actually just hit her up today. I was like, Hey, we need to meet. <laughs> it's been a while. I need to, I need to see you. Um, but I, I don't see a downside. I'm like, I might need to just do a check in at least once a month to keep me accountable and sharp. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, 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 um, I say I need to go and, and meet with her real quick. Carlos said, um, Samantha, we're, we're products of no pops and some of us had ratchet mothers. It's the absence of life from the beginning for most. The thug life acronym hits differently as men. I did therapy as a teen. I understand that. And you know what I think? 
I think it's real. It would be really, really dope. Antoine said he started his therapy session. Good job, Antoine. You about you on your way, sir. You about to do it, Antoine. You about to take over the world. You about to take over the world, sir. Um. But I want to say, Carlos, that um, I think it's, I think, especially when you've had no father, ratchet mom, or you say ratchet mother, um, there's a lot of healing that needs to be done. Because then we end up bleeding on people that didn't cut us, right? We end up being a walking, self-fulfilling prophecy. Things are sabotaged. We don't perform at our optimal capacity. We're not, we're not the same individual and we will never be the same individual. But there are ways that you can become better than what you ever were before. The Bible says this and I believe this. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, and minds cannot imagine all that I have planned for you. Now you can decide that you've already seen your best and that's up to you. But I haven't seen my best years yet. I haven't seen Sam at optimal capacity. I haven't seen that. I don't know what God has in store, but eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. Y'all mark my words and minds can't even imagine all that God has planned for me. One thing that a pastor said to me that would like resonate me with me forever, he was like, God allows us to live on whatever level we settle for. The God you see is the God you get. When Jesus walked into a town and it was his hometown, they saw a carpenter's son. And so they were, he was limited in what he could do in that town because of how they saw him. But when he went to other towns, he was able to heal and he was able to renew and restore and do, do tons of miracles. Because the God they saw is a God they've received. And some of us are limited in our capacity because maybe if you don't believe in God, what you, you've limited your ability to see what God, what I, I don't know what you believe in. I believe in God. That's the most natural thing for me to say. You have limited what God can do in your life based upon what has already happened. You're like, I've already seen my best years. Don't speak that over your life. You haven't. You haven't seen your best years. But if that's what you believe, you're right. Because we limit the, our life and our life's potential by what we think. Oh, I was heartbroken, Sam. This, I'm not going I'm never gonna find love again. I don't ever want to be in a relationship like that again. I never want to go through that. Okay, that's what you're gonna get. But here's the thing: we were created for connectivity. So one day you're gonna want somebody, and one day you're gonna really you gonna want that stability. You're gonna want somebody to have your back, and you don't spoke some things over your own life. I'm not gonna let you do that. Not on this platform. We are game changers. We are going to change the game, not only in the world, but in our lives. And that is restricted by how we think of ourselves and, our, and how we think of our impact on the world and what we were created for. The person, Gabriel says this, the person that says that they can and the person who says that they cannot or can't are both correct, 100%. You speak over your life what you want to see. Eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard all that God has planned for me. Y'all are going to see me do some crazy, amazing things. Y'all are going to see me marry an amazing, phenomenal man. You're going to be like, what? I can't believe she did that. Oh, yeah. No, I listen, I'm speaking life over my life, and I've seen life happen, and I know God is capable, period. You got to push on. You got to push on, soldier. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. I'm not going to let you guys on this platform speak death over your life. Greater is he that is in me that is in the world. You guys have more in you. You guys have greater in you. You guys are going to do amazing, incredible things. You're going to shift the atmosphere. You're going to be the first generation of millionaires and billionaires in your life and in your family's life. You are about to, you're going to be chain breakers. 
That's what you're going to be. You're going to find the love of your life. It's going to love you. Love the love the, love the the sweat off your brow. Going to love you so much. That's what I'm going to speak over you. You're going to, when you walk into to rooms, you're going to shift the atmosphere because of the presence that's on you. You're going to have amazing things happen. The world's going to shift. The chains are going to break. I mean, you're going to do some incredible things. You're going to break generational curses in your family. You're going to be the story that's going to be talked about every generation after you. Speak that over your life. You have not seen your best days. Your best days are coming. Come on, keep that foot on the daggone gas pedal, y'all. Keep the foot on the gas pedal. Thank you, Bernard, for your gift. Thank you, guys, for your gift. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, guys, for who, who have sewn into me tonight. I'm, I'm sorry I have been looking at the cash app. I, I'm in, I, I've been here. I just saw it pop up again. I apologize. Y'all, <clears throat> I speak life over us. And I want you to speak life and stand in agreement with me. We are game changers. And we're not just game changers to this YouTube space. We're game changers to everybody we impact and we touch in our day-to-day -day lives. Our lives, I, I believe this about everybody on here. I believe this about everybody on here. God sometimes allows us to have a crazy story. A greater story for God to get the glory. And sometimes he makes things seem so impossible. Just so you know on the other side that God did it. That no one can take credit. That no one can do it. He wants y'all to know that, listen, the only way this could have happened this way is if God was involved. God was involved. And so a lot of times when the worst situations in my life has occurred, I've realized now, like yesterday I saw something happen in my own bank account. I saw, I saw somebody I didn't want to see in my own bank account. I'll be honest with you. I looked at it and I said, this is just a greater story for God to get the glory. I'm going to write down this number. And I know that God is going to multiply it over and over again. Why do I say that? Because God, guys, I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen him do it in my own life. And I know this wasn't supposed to be a sermon. And I know this wasn't what God had, what I had intended to, to talk about right now. But I, I said to myself, no, God's going to do triple, triple, double overflow. I rebuke that number. I'm not going to let that bother me. I ain't going to let that hurt me. No, uh-uh. And God's going to do some incre incredible things. God's going to switch that thing inside out, upside down. That's what I believe. I used to allow little things like that to throw off my whole day. And it wasn't really little. It's a big deal. But I trust God so much at this point in my life that I've seen. It's like, you know what? That's just a greater story for God to get the glory. He just made it seem so crazy. Just so crazy. That I had to give him the glory. There's no other person that could have worked it out this way. exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask, think, or imagine, according to the power that is a work within us. God is going to work that thing out, y'all. And I know next week I'm going to come in here and I'm going to tell you guys a testimony is going to blow your mind. That's how much faith I have in God. I've seen him do it. And it's taken me walking through some of the hardest points of my life for me to have the faith that I have today. To be able to tell you that you're going to be the first billionaires and millionaires in your family. 
that you're going to break generational curses, that you're going to touch purpose and impact lives and shift atmospheres with your existence. That once, once you get to the other side of healing and understanding purpose and hearing God in a way you've never heard him, that you're going to be able to do things with your voice and with your hearing and with your seeing, you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to do things without saying anything. I mean, it's, it's going to be incredible what God can do in, in you and through you. I believe that. I believe that with all of my being. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've experienced it. I've seen God do miraculous things even with my own platform. I don't deserve it. I didn't earn it. I'm a mixed girl from, you know, New Jersey. But God, but God. So I want to speak faith into you guys today. And I want to say to the men on here who's watching me net live or watching me on the replay, you deserve, you deserve to heal. You deserve to get the healing that's required for your journey. You don't realize that the things that you've experienced, the trauma, the sadness, all of those things, how they're impacting you to be able to see and touch purpose. Go ahead, get, get on better help. Get they're, they're, they're cheaper websites, you know, they're they're affordable. They have people that you can talk to online. You don't have to leave your home. Get in front of somebody. Touch purpose. You can't chase purpose when you don't see clearly. And I think that when people are dealing with trauma and when they're dealing with different things in their lives, they're emotionally intoxicated. You can't see clearly when you're intoxicated. Well, Benji, I'm giving you guys websites. I'm giving you guys tools to be able to get the help that you deserve. That's why I brought up BetterHelp. I think it's, there's one, um, there's Psychology Today. What's it called? Here's another one. Hold on. Talk, talk therapy. The talk therapy. Talk space. It's talk space. Get in front of somebody, y'all. There is no shame in that. No shame in that. No shame in that. Okay? Y'all, I had another topic that I wanted to jump into, but I think I'm going to end it here because I don't even want to make this about anything else besides what we just talked about. What do y'all think? I have one more thing. But I just, I don't want to, I, I don't know. You, you tell me. There's a topic I talked about earlier. It's on a different note. What do y'all think? And again, I want to um, I want to thank everybody for who sewed into me tonight. Um, I know this wasn't one of those that, you know, again, this is, uh, yeah, I think I should wait as well. I think I should wait. I think I should wait. Um, because it's a different, y'all, it's a completely different, it's a completely different topic. And I don't even want to dampen or lessen this because this was, this was, this was a God thing. I think me going on with the other, it's not, it wouldn't be in the, in the right space. So we'll talk about it next week. Um, we'll talk about it next week. But anyway, y'all, I love you guys. And I, I really, really really, really hope. Watch us on replay. Send this to other people. Hit the like button. Somebody needs to hear this. Somebody is, somebody doesn't have hope. Somebody doesn't have those things. Somebody doesn't have, there's certain things that someone doesn't have that this is going to give them the hope, the motivation to push forward. So please share it. Please like it. Please subscribe if you're not already a part of this Game Changer Nation. And y'all, I will see you guys next Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Y'all already know what it is. 
I love you guys. I love you, Game Changer Nation. And I really, really hope that this show did something for your spirit tonight. Because it did for me. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and rebuke and bind any spirit, any negative spirit in the name of Jesus, any evil spirit, any anything. I, I rebuke and bind it in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over it. I'm not going to let these, I'm not going to let it happen. God is with you. And we are going to go ahead before you and behind you. Okay. Period. I love you guys. He and God is about to do something crazy, y'all. God is about to do something crazy. I, there's going to be some praise reports. The next time I see y'all, there's going to be some praise reports in the chat. Okay. Period. I love y'all. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> okay, family. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.